In this project, I'm going to show you how to model IME-144's lathe project number one. Now, the first step is to look at the engineering drawing and determine the different features you're going to need to model. Looking at this drawing, I see that we've got a round part, which leads me to believe that we're going to use revolved protrusion for the first step. After looking at that, I see that we have threaded holes, both internal and external, and chamfers. So really, the steps are going to be revolve the main body, create the internally threaded holes, create the chamfers, then create the externally threaded thread on the, on the outside end here. So we're going to move over to SolidWorks. Our first step is to select File New, and we're going to be creating a part. Next, we have to determine which plane we want to go ahead and create a revolved feature off of. Now a revolve uses an axis of revolution and revolves a closed profile around that axis of revolution. If the profile has distance between the bottom of the profile and the axis of revolution, there will be a hole in the part. If the axis of revolution lies on the same profile that we're revolving, is, that we're revolving around, it's a solid part. Also, we have to determine which plane we're going to go ahead and model that revolved sketch around. So looking at the drawing, we see that the front and the top planes would be the same. Therefore, when we go over to SolidWorks, we can go ahead and model either using the front or the top plane. So when I pick Revolve, I either pick Front or Top. I'm going to go with Front. What that does is, is it brings the front plane normal to our view and allows us to use the sketch tools to sketch a profile. Now I'm going to specify the axis of revolution using a center line. So underneath the Line Tools drop down menu, I'm going to select Center Line. Then I'm going to line it up with the origin and make a horizontal center line. I press escape to end my, my center line tool. Now using the line tool, I'm going to lock the first point into the origin, draw a vertical line, horizontal, vertical down, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, one more horizontal line, down to end it at the center line and then close the profile. You'll notice because the shaded sketch contours are selected it shaded that closed profile. Now it's time to associate size with our sketch. To do that we're going to use the Smart Dimension tool. When I click on Smart Dimension I want to go ahead and first give it the overall length of the part. Looking back at the drawing, you'll see the overall length is 4 inches. So I'm going to key in 4.0. Enter. What that does is the first dimension we go ahead and place scales the sketch based off that dimension. Now it's time to go ahead and to define the rest of the sizes on this sketch. To do that, I'm simply going to click on this line right here, drag upwards, and type in 1.75. Enter. Next, I'm going to go from this edge to that line, drag up, and type in 2.50. Enter. Last but not least, we go from that edge to that edge. We're going to define that distance as 0.75. Going back to the drawing, you'll see all of our distances have been defined for the linear distances. That'll be the z-axis on the lathe. Now, moving back to SolidWorks, we're going to define the diameters. Because we have a center line, we can dimension the diameter and not have to worry about dividing by 2. So if I dimension from the center line to that top edge, and I drop down below the center line, it becomes a diameter dimension. If I keep the dimension above the center line, it's a radius dimension. 
So I'm going to bring them down and specify the diameter of 0.925. Enter. Now notice over here, if we don't fully define our sketches, they may actually move to places that we don't want them to be in. For example, this value right here is above where it should be. So to fix that, because it's blue, I can simply press escape to grab my pointer tool and I can drag this down to make it look like the profile should before I continue dimensioning. Because remember, anything that's blue isn't defined and I can fully move it until it becomes defined by a, a sketch dimension. So next, I'm going to hit Smart Dimension again and dimension the rest of my diameters. So I'm going to go from here to there. Remember, you got to drag it below the center line for it to be a diameter and type in 0.725. The next one, if I go from here to here, is going to be 0.625. And last but not least, we have our major diameter of our half 13 thread, which when I go from here to here, we end up with a 0.495 inch diameter. Now notice, with the four diameter dimensions and the four length dimensions, I have fully defined these protrusions on my part, and my sketch is turned completely black, meaning that I can no longer dimension anything else. If I do, it'll become overdefined. Let me show you that. If I was to dimension this distance right here and place it, it says it's, a, it's, it's basically will overdefine the sketch and it turns everything yellow that pertains to overdefining the sketch. So when I hit cancel, it'll go ahead and not place that dimension because that would be bad. We'd have two dimensions conflicting with each other. Now that we have a sketch driven by dimensions, and an axis of revolution, I can go ahead and exit the sketch. This brings me into the 3D environment where my part is ready to be extruded into the 3D, or my cross section. If I didn't want to go a full 360 degrees, notice right here I could type in 300 and make Pac-Man. Or I know that I'm going a full 360, so I'm going to go ahead and just go back to the full 360 and hit my check mark. So you'll see that created the lathe part's body in one feature. Now all we got left are some chamfers and some threads. At this point, I really recommend saving your SolidWorks file. Let's go File, Save As. I'm going to go ahead and put mine on the desktop. I'm going to call it IME 144 lathe project number one Giorgio go ahead and save it as your last name now I'm a big fan of naming all my features in my feature tree here so I'm gonna go ahead and right click and I'm gonna go to my features properties I'm gonna call revolve one revolve body press OK this allows me to easily keep track of the different features and go back and edit them at any time. Because remember, if you made the feature the wrong size and it's in the 3D component, you don't need to delete it. You can always go back to that feature in the feature tree, right click, and you can edit the sketch, which allows you to edit the two-dimensional information or the two-dimensional sketch by changing the sizes. Once you're done, you simply hit exit the sketch and your changes are reflected in the model. If you wanted to edit the 3D component, you can right click on the feature, go to edit feature. This allows you to make changes to the 3D component of, this, of the model feature. So when I hit check mark, I'm able to come back to my original state here. So now we're gonna learn how to create chamfers. This is done with the chamfer tool. So going back and looking at my drawing here, I look for my chamfer size, 2 by 0.05 by 45 degrees. I notice that there's one on this end. Then I look at the other end and I see there's a chamfer there. All threads start with a chamfer feature. Therefore, we're going to chamfer the front and the back ends, or the back and the front ends, 
before we actually create the threads. And we'll do that when manufacturing the part as well. We'll go ahead and create the chamfers before we cut the thread on the part. Because the chamfer is going to go ahead and help the thread start. So now that I know the size of my chamfer, I simply go back to my model, and under the fillet tool is the chamfer feature. So I simply click on chamfer, I come down over here to my chamfer parameters, and I set my size of 50 thou. And I double check that it's still set at 45 degrees. Now, I'm a fan of seeing a preview of the feature before it happens. Therefore, I have full preview selected. And that means when I pick the edge of the part, it's going to show me a preview of the chamfer. Therefore, I, can, I do like this in design because I can pick a size of the chamfer so it looks good. Chamfers are usually cosmetic. They make your part look good and keep the sharp edges from cutting anybody who's handling the part. Now, one more edge, and I have both chamfers placed. In order to confirm, I hit the check mark, and the feature is created. Right-click on my feature properties and call it front and back chamfers. All right. Remember, save often. At this point, I'm ready to use the hole wizard in order to create some threaded holes in my part. What size, you say? Let's go to our drawing. Back here looking at the drawing, I see that we've got two threaded holes in the part. A 3 8 16 that's 3 quarters of an inch deep for the thread, and then a 5 16 18 which is 1 inch deep for the thread. Now notice, in the notes, we have a different drill depth compared to our thread depth. That's because when you're manufacturing an internal thread, you have to drill deeper with the drill than you go ahead and cut the thread with the tap. So therefore, the drill will always go slightly deeper than the tap's depth. And on the engineering drawing, the thread or the thread depth is the one that's specified in the thread callout. So moving along, we're going to make this 3 8 16 thread 3 quarters of an inch deep but we're going to drill one inch deep for that three quarter inch depth thread. So let's associate that data with the SolidWorks hole wizard. Moving back along, we know that the hole goes on this back side right here. So what I do is I grab my hole wizard and I'm going to pick the type of hole I'd like to create. The hole wizard allows me to pick can make counterboard holes, countersunk, or countersink holes. That's made with a countersink, but it's a countersunk hole. It's a simple hole, either through or blind, or a straight tap hole, which is a threaded hole. So I'm going to pick straight tap, and engineers don't make up their own thread sizes, so we're going to use the ANSI inch th standard thread sizes and pick the 3 8 16 thread. Now, now that it knows my thread size, I've got to pick my depth. Now, because the thread isn't going through the entire part, through all is not the correct end condition. I'm going to go ahead and pick blind, which means the hole is blind. It doesn't go all the way through. You can't see it on the other side, hence the name blind. So what we're going to do is once we've picked blind hole, we're going to go ahead and pick the hole depth. Looking at the drawing, it was one inch deep. So I type in 1.00. Now next is the thread depth. Right here, that'll be the depth of the thread. Remember, the holes always go, got to go deeper than the thread. So 0.75 is what our thread callout said for the thread depth. So hence, 0.75 goes in this value. Now last but not least on the sizing of our hole, SolidWorks likes to have the near side countersunk sink button selected. You need to uncheck this because we don't want a chamfer on the side of this thread right now. We're going to go ahead and create that with a different tool. Now to review, we're done with the hole sizing. We got a straight tapped hole, the size is 3 8 16, the drill goes one inch deep, thread goes three quarters deep without a near side countersink. Once that's all selected, 
we're going to place the location of our hole using this positions tab. When I click on position, my next step is to click on the face on the model where I'd like to place the hole. So I click on the back face of the model. Now, I can either place the hole right here through the origin or press space bar normal to and have the view 90 degrees to my face so it's easier to place the part the hole. Now when you're finished placing the hole go ahead and hit the check mark and you've created your first threaded hole. A 3 8 16 tapped hole three quarters of an inch deep for the thread one inch deep for the drill. The next thread looking back at the drawing is a 5 16 18 then the thread depth goes one inch deep and we're going to drill one and a quarter inch deep for that tap. So moving back to SolidWorks we're going to move around over to this side. Notice we've got this face and we're going to use the hole wizard to go ahead and set up a 5 16 18 thread. So you'll see right here, it's 5 16 18. The thread depth was 1 inch deep, and the drill depth was 1.25 inches deep. Once I specify those two parameters, I just need to double check the near side countersink is not selected. Then I go to the positions tab and select the front face in order to place the hole on. Now to make my selection through the origin easier, I press spacebar and the normal to button, and this brings the sketch 90 degrees or normal to my view, allowing me to easily place the hole right through the origin. And then simply hitting the check bar box to place that feature on the model. Looking at the model, I've got everything finished except for one feature, the thread. That's the external thread. So moving back to the drawing and looking at it, we've created the two B threads, the B thread, which is an internal thread. We now need to create an external thread with a different tool. Notice the half dash 13 UNC 2A thread cannot be made with the hole wizard because it's an A thread, an external thread. Therefore, we have to use the thread tool underneath the hole wizard menu. So when I select the little fly out menu underneath the hole wizard and select thread, I go ahead and get the thread menu on the left hand side in the design tree. Well, this is pretty straightforward. All we got to do is we select the thread location on the back edge of our part. We select the size half dash 13. Notice it's a decimal value with the thread tool, not a fraction. And then the distance of 0.75 off of our part. Now, looking at it, we end up with the pink lines representing where the cutouts going to be located on our solid model there. Now if you were to create a left-handed thread you can click left-handed right here. Once you're done with the edge, the end conditions length, and then the size, you go ahead and hit check mark and the thread is created for you. At this point, we have successfully modeled lathe project number one. In fact, if I was to hit spacebar isometric, you'll notice the view looks a lot like the isometric view in our 2D drawing here that you were provided. Now the next step will be to go on and create the engineering drawing for this model. Join me on the next video to create that engineering drawing.